we have the the shape pretty much where we want it right but now we're gonna look at the anatomy of the teeth that we need to um, build up right so we look how the cusp are angulated where they the inter uh, caspation right so always I put my brush in the water let it soak and I use always the <clears throat> little protector so it doesn't bend my tip it's very important to maintain this tip of the brush because that's going to help you for the details okay so once i look on this side where my cusp are how they're angulated where they're supposed to go then i can use some of the incisal porcelain and add or where i needed to add i'm gonna add just in little areas where it's necessary. And here on the second bake, actually we're gonna concentrate more on the details. Not so much, we have the shape, but now it's time to add details. So don't forget every time we add a little bit, uh, it's always going to shrink when we bake it. So be aware that if you add too little, then you might need to add a little more after the second bake to compensate for the shrinkage. Okay, so small amounts of incisal porcelain, and I'm trying to build up those marginal ridges, right? which are very important. And you see, when you have a brush that has a nice tip, pointed tip, it helps you not only with where the porcelain should go, but also with the shape. It's very easy to maneuver the porcelain where you need it. Time to time, we can vibrate it so any moisture that it's trapped in the porcelain can come to the surface, and then we can use a tissue to remove the excess liquid from the porcelain. All right? <coughs> We look at the cusp tips and uh, triangular ridges we can see that actually they're very well defined in the natural dentition so we're going to try to copy that can use the brush to blend in the porcelain. So every time we apply porcelain, if we don't blend it in, it kind of looks like there is a line between the layers of the porcelain. So either you can use a dry brush or I like to use a damp brush like I did, I'm doing now to kind of uh, blend in the porcelain. For the Pontic, we still have a gap. We can see the gap between the buildup of the porcelain and the gum itself. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this tissue. Remove the bridge, add the tissue. 
and the idea is to <coughs> keep the porcelain when we build up the underneath of the pontic to keep it moist so it doesn't dry out and we're gonna when we're gonna remove the bridge for the baking it doesn't break I'm gonna add a small amount of porcelain remove some of the moisture and then make sure <coughs> excuse me that the tissue that we put there it's moist moist enough then I'm taking my bridge and push it in so now I can see my dentin layer okay if I turn it on the on the lingual I need to add a little bit more there okay so when I take it out see it takes the shape of the pantic the gum and also it doesn't leave too much of the porcelain re residue on the tissue because the tissue is uh, wet So even if it's a little bit extra uh, build up, that's fine because the porcelain shrinks during the build up, during the baking, so that's fine. The next step is to follow up with the shape that we need. So we saw that our natural teeth, they're more pointy the cusps the lean the the angles are a little more line angles they are a little more obtuse the more acute so we have to make sure that we put those line angles and we'll angulate angulate them to create the illusion that our teeth are not so wide they they have to look a little more narrower so by ma manipulating the line angles we create that effect of the tooth being narrow even though in reality it's not In some instances, maybe in this case, we could have used a little bit of uh, pink porcelain to mimic the gum line, the natural gum line that the patient has. But since we don't have pink porcelain, I'm just gonna do it this way. Again, we have to pay special attention to the marginal ridges. So we're gonna add them.
always close your articulator very gentle to see if where you add it, it's matching where the occlusal contacts should be. But you can see now in the second bake, I'm concentrating more on adding incisal porcelain, not so much dentin, because <clears throat> the dentin, uh, the first bake, looks to me a little too dull, like there is no uh, translucency, so I'm gonna add more incisal to create that natural translucency effect. back to the marginal ridges. Sometimes you may have the perfect shape with dentin, porcelain, and then <coughs> when we finish it and uh, we check for occlusal contacts, for mesial and distal contacts, we realize that, oh, the shade is a little bit off. I don't have enough incisal, or my, my crown porcelain looks dull. So even though the shape sometimes it's perfect, the, the fit is perfect, we might need to grind down the dentin to add more incisor 
to create that natural effect of translucency. brush just flatten it a little bit and just blend it in always make sure if we have a metal color that the metal it's clean there is no porcelain on the metal so use your brush to clean the surface at the metal, see where there is extra porcelain on the metal, clean it up. Okay. So now we are ready for firing, I will take it out, very gentle, and I know on the pontic I'm okay, but I might be a little bit short after the bake because the porcelain shrink. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add freehand a little bit of porcelain to close that gap. the pontic and it's underneath where we think nobody can see we still want to have that nice blend of the porcelain and also smooth out the surface and then use the clean brush to clean up any porcelain that we might have either by the color or inside the crown we don't want any porcelain inside our coping okay and i will bake it this way and then making any adjustments necessary after the baking mm -hmm. 